Welcome to the round 12 team sheets and final trades video. It's George from Fantasy Take TV. Uh, this week, it will go over the seven games, only seven this week. Um, four teams are not playing. And yeah, a few, I think these, this buy round was a little bit tricky. Um, lost Sicily for, I think, 60 odd percent of the top 5% have Sicily. So pretty bad loss. Like you couldn't lose him at a worse time, basically, except for maybe the last buy that would be even worse, but maybe the second worst time to lose him. Um, I think um, most people thought that this would be an okay buy, but yeah, a few few rookies dropped. I think no Sam Simpson. I, I can't remember. I don't think Davey was named either. Campbell Chester not named. Not that that even matters, but a lot of people would be carrying him. But I don't think the carnage was too bad this week, but still some important topics to go over. But I'll go over my final trades and how many I'm fielding and whatnot. Uh, all going well. I'll be fielding 18 this week. Uh, I think I will have a bit of a, a regression week just because I'm down I only have 19 premiums um, but I'm down 7 so I'm fielding 12 and that's including a sheasel and a day and I'll be holding I probably have to keep day and sheasel for the year just how it is um, and yeah my trade my only trade this week was Ford in for Sturt not really much doesn't really do a whole lot for me it just gets me the extra body and i don't have to carry the dead weight at f8 for the year which i assume i think walters will come in for sturt and walters was on the injury list uh, walters is removed from the injury list so i assume that he's all good so i can't see sturt playing the form of tracy and amos will yeah hold him out of the team i'm guessing unless they move him to a wing or something i don't know um but yeah, I think uh, the plan is we're going to go down to three trades post-buy. That's including Day and Sheasel, but we'll have about 100 to 150k in the bank, I think, just because we've got seven plays to get rid of. So Atkins, Mitchell, Weddle, Sincotta, Humphrey, Johnson, and Ford. So that's seven players that we can turn into three premiums. I think we should be able to afford Oliver too. Uh, I think Oliver, probably Sarong or Neil, and probably a Tom Stewart, I guess. Um, that's probably what we're looking at so uh, hopefully that goes all well but every time we plan for stuff shit hits a fan so look I'm hoping to go down to three trades with money in the bank um, I think JD last year I think he went down to three or four I can't remember and he had money in the bank and you know he was able to sideways from memory to you know good premiums whereas I didn't have money in the bank I think I had um, Initiated my ruck line. I couldn't get to Sean Darcy. I had to go to um, Oscar McInerney. And then I had uh, George Stewart. And I couldn't get up to Tom Stewart. So I could only go down to Bailey Dale, who lost all his points to Ed Richards. So having that money in the bank, sometimes it's better to go down to three trades with money in the bank than four with no money in the bank. Um, yeah, because otherwise you might be getting a worse premium for, might be eight weeks or however, however long. But is it ideal to go down to three trades uh, no, that's too low. Last year, I think I went down to three, ended up using two. And the one I did, I wasted. Actually, like, lost 100 points on it. I did steal in for Petrarca, and yeah, lost 100 points on that. Very silly trade. Then the year before that, I think I had three again, and I was fine. Uh, just the last, I think I fielded a rookie in the round 23 when, um, what's his name? I think Zeeble was a laid out, so... I think you can get by with three trades left. It's not ideal. It's, it is quite dangerous. And the thing is, um, long-term injuries, say three weeks plus, they're, they're still trades, and under three weeks are are still holds, I think. So, yeah, it is what it is. And uh, if shit hits the fan, hits the fan. That's just where I'm at. But at least I'll be able to get some good premiums in, and hopefully these rookies just continue to hold their spot and do okay and... Hopefully we get some downgrade targets too. So 102s from the mid-season draft will be great, although I haven't looked too closely at that. Um, but yeah, we'll get into the team sheets now. Uh, did I say, yeah, I was fielding, I think I said before, I was fielding 12, so no Chessa, but um, whatever. One job needed him for this round, but oh well. Uh, Melbourne versus Carlton, not much to note on Melbourne's side of things. Pretty much nothing, just no Oliver. They're confident Oliver will, will be back in round... Or next week so if you still if you're holding him um i think you'll be a nice pod for you or somewhat of a pod um 
think he was 90% owned when he went down. Now I assume probably half of that. And then with Carlton, the major thing here is now it looks like Cincotta or Cincotta is back for is in for Nick Newman. So if you traded uh, Cincotta, don't feel too bad. It didn't look like he was going to get back into the team, but when you have six forced outs and one of them is a direct swap down back, then he's, he's always going to be a chance. So I think Cincotta, you just kind of hope he plays for the next three weeks and makes money to this buy and get rid of him then. Uh, given Newman is, I think, about three weeks or so, uh, that would be perfect. So Newman might come back after the buy and yeah, hopefully get a few games out of Cincotta, but yeah, don't feel too bad if you're traded. I think it, I don't think he'll make a huge amount of money and he could easily score 20 again. He could score 80, who knows? So I uh, see how he goes. Um, that's pretty much it, I think. Not much else to note. Uh, Hewitt, unfortunate. No Paddy Dow, interesting. Apparently he's been going well in the VFL. It sounds like they've given up on him though. Uh, Holland's out for a long time, so he's a must trade. Bit of money on his head. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, could you VC a Gorn or Petrarca? Uh, no P Pitney. I think, I'm not sure Gorn. You just don't know his ruck time week to week, so you're not like, quite sure what his ceiling is at the moment. Petrarca, yeah, he's definitely a VC option in Carlton's current form, but to be honest, I don't think either of these teams are premiership through. Well, Carlton are not, but I don't think Melbourne are in that great of form either. Haven't really beaten anyone, I think, of note. So. Uh, anyway, that's pretty much it, I think. Not much more to tell. We'll speed this up a little bit. So Port Adelaide versus Hawthorne. So I think, yeah, the main one, Sisley, is out for Scrimshaw. It sounds like Scrimshaw is behind both Seamus and... Where is he? Weddle on the wing. Ugh, I hope he plays down back, but I thought he played a bit higher last week, just on the eye, but I haven't checked the... I don't know the, the splits. I don't have champion data. Uh, data in front of me so uh, regardless not much else to note here so yeah I think could you trade Sicily given he's going to miss two weeks you could sideways him to Stewart who's going to play basically effectively two more games in Sicily given that um, you can cover Stewart much easier next week if you trade him it makes it very hard to get him out and you have to wait until round 15 uh, to get Sicily back in and he could easily be 650k given his 40 break even and I think he's about 610k so I think you just copper hold him, don't so you don't have to worry about getting him back in. So uh, if you're like flushed for money in trades, I think I actually would trade him to Stewart. But I think if you're flushed for money in trades, you're probably smart enough to get in the Stewart in given his buy. So um, not much else. I think Ollie Lords actually paid a lot of money. I think he's made 100k plus with a negative break even. So that's one we kind of just overlooked. But I guess we've always been like that with. Um, Young key forwards, just happy to pass. So, uh, Ollie Wines, time on ground still wasn't great. A few people asked, is he a good cheap option? I mean, if you're struggling, I guess he's okay, but he's not really. Uh, I've already got Steele, who looks to be struggling at times, but yeah, hopefully he freshens up. But uh, not really for me for Ollie Wines, but I just think the TOG and CBAs aren't what they used to be. So, I think you're looking at like a, maybe a 95 to 100 average at best, but um, might be okay. Not, not too sure. It has looked better the past month than he did early in the year with the, off the limited preseason. Um, that's pretty much it. I think if Dylan Williams scored poorly, I still think you can hold him to his last buy. Even if he drops a little bit of money, he's going to be a nice warm body. Now, West Coast versus Collingwood. Um, probably the main one here. I think side bottom's out for a while. Harvey Harrison, so just quick Google. Uh, medium forward, 191 centimeters, I think. It looks like he's, I'm guessing he's in for Jamie Elliott. Um, he has, he plays two, then he has his buy. So he's one you could assess in round 15 if he plays. I think he's just in for depth. And he's, I think his AFL fantasy average in the VFL is around 50 or so. So he looks like a very poor rookie forward, 123k. One that I'll just happily pass on, I think, or just no reason to go early, just assess in a few weeks. Uh, Darcy Cameron, a lot of people going him at the moment in Discord. I think for me, I brought him in, he did his... I kind of felt sick when I brought him in, because any time you bring someone in who's done a hamstring in preseason, you worry slightly. Brought him in, got injured straight away, um, knee injury. 
Uh, I think the durability does worry me a little bit, but that's just me. That's I, I do probably think a bit more conservatively at times to others. The role is there. Uh, is that is he always going to be? Will he always have the eighty percent plus rock roll like he did last week? Not sure. I think probably he does. Against West Coast, do they manage him a bit throughout the year? Could they sub him off at times? Maybe I'm just fear mongering or whatever that word is. Um, I don't know. I'll probably pass, but I think he'll be okay. Like I could definitely see him being subbed off if they're up by a lot, but I'm not sure if, if McRae is the type to do that. So, um, yeah, I don't, don't let me put ideas in your head. I'm not too sure on Darcy Cameron. I'll reassess in round 15, I think, but um, yeah, get another two. His break even's high enough where he's not going to get out of reach. But nice matchup this week against BJ and Jamison. Dogs versus Geelong. So, Trelaw's back. How does that affect McRae? I would assume negatively because you think Trelaw gets a lot of CBAs or maybe they ease him in. And McRae's CBAs could easily go back to in the 20s like they were the other day. So, I still think McRae's a fine option. Durable. Always been a ball magnet. On the eyes, looked much better the past few weeks, but the role might not enable him to score super well. That's what the numbers are saying. So, um... I think he's around the mark for top six with upside if he gets the mid-time, but otherwise he's one where I'm not in a hurry to get him in. But just for old nostalgia purposes and uh, I guess somewhat safety, given he still should go 100-plus with a crappy roll, um, I'd like to get him in, but I'm not sure I can. Um, looking at Geelong side of things, so the main one here is O'Sheen Mullen. Now, the issue with Mullen is... Geelong are expecting quite a few plays back post by. I think at Dangerfield. I think Guthrie's been put on ice to the maybe he might not even play again this year. Like maybe around finals if they want him to get back. There's a few others that escape me. Um, I can't remember who, but listening to SEN this week, there's a guy from Ireland uh, who's like has his head wrapped around the Gaelic football scene, and he was just speaking about Mullen. I think he must have spoken to Chris Scott, and he said. Chris Scott wanted to play Mullen in round one, so I think they really, really rate him. Um, and he showed a lot of good signs, I think, especially in the first half last week. But I still worry, like, could he be sub? Um, oh, interesting, Bose is not even best 22. Maybe they ease him in as a sub, I don't know. So I think I think they rate him. I think they, Chris Scott likes him and wants to play him. Clearly, that's what the, I guess, the PR is. But just Geelong, they're kind of... For me, they're hard to trust with the rookies. Um, just because they've always had like a strong best 22. So I'm not going early on him. Would I go early if it enables an upgrade? Oh, probably wouldn't. Just because people are going to need that upgrade to, to get... I think Seamus Mitchell down to Mullen is going to be a very popular trade if he plays in round 14. So I'm going to... I'd rather save it for then... like. If he doesn't play, you got this one or two K stuck on your bench. You might have a constable or a Chesser dead there as well. Um, so I'll pass on Mullen for this week. But he's one. If he plays on his bubble, I'll definitely grab him. So um, I, I just find a way to wait, to be honest. But I think I'm a bit more optimistic that he'll play post his buy than what I'm hearing. But um, from others, just on Twitter and whatnot. But there's just a, yeah, a lot of plays to come in. So hopefully that makes sense what I've been saying but yeah, I'd, I'd rather wait but I think there's a good chance he plays Gold Coast versus Adelaide I think this would be a good game uh, did all this celebrating for Laird getting off about my super coach team but the Crows I should think more about AFL but this is going to be a tough game and I'm not sure we'd have a, we'd be able to win this without Laird going up against Rao and Anderson in there especially in Rao's current form Um, nothing really uh, while we're omitted, it's probably a bit stiff. The main one here is Mac Andrew was playing in defense, and Jai Farah, I think he plays, he's been playing defense in the VFL. I can't remember where he played. Got, he was a sub last week, so Andrew out, club suspension. I don't know what it is or how long. Um, in for, and in comes Jai Farah, who I expect to play down back. So that means they got six defenders here. Um, that's five, forget Fiorini. So one, two, three, four, five. And then Long is six. I assume they plays there, plays back. And then Joel Jeff Joel Jeffrey 
is number seven who's been playing down back. So who are their tools here? Barry plays forward. Um, one, two, three, four, Holman five. The reason why I'm counting this is I'm not sure if Atkins plays back or up the ground. I, hopefully they see that he was much better down back, but maybe they don't want him. They don't see him as a future piece down there. So, look, I'll be holding this week. I, I'm not against trading because break-evens, I think it's like 44, but if he has a wing role again, half forward wing, I'm not going to score too much, I think. But he's done seven. He's in that role at the Crows. Joey Ground, not really good for outside players. A bit more scrappy of a game. Just watching him play it can be a hard watch where he just doesn't refuses to tackle when he should or sometimes doesn't apply pressure when he can. So I'll be holding. I'm not against trading, to be honest, but I think I just need the numbers this week. The way it's worked out, I'll be holding, and I'll probably need him for round 15. Um, fingers crossed, and then upgrade him in round 16. So if that happens, that would be great, but if not, I'll just get rid of him before then. Um... That's pretty much it, I think. Fiorini, if you have him, I think you can trade. Probably killed his question. Um, two more games. GWS versus Richmond. So these are extended benches. Sam Banks, not extended bench, so not sure if he plays. And then Matt Flynn in. I don't expect him to play because I think Briggs can solo fine. So their tools are Riccardi, Hogan... Himmelberg, green kind of plays tallish, good above his head. So I don't think we'll see Flynn in the team. So I think Briggs will still be a fine option. Very good option as well. I'd love to just trade him in and leave him at R3 and just um, use him as cover for the year. That would be great. So um, I think he'll play for the rest of the year because like Flynn has been in and out of the team for, what, two or three years now, back when he was a rookie for us. So... Um, I guess what Briggs has shown is really, really positive, and I think, yeah, they'll give Briggs a nice run now, so he looks like their future ruck to me, because when I captained Marshall against him, I was thinking, okay, easier matchup, wasn't sure how great Briggs was, but still like a backup ruck, you'd think that Marshall goes okay, he still scored a 120 on him, but I thought Briggs competed really well and beat him in the first half. So I think Briggs is a good Ruckman, and I think he'll hold, and I think he'll make a stack of money. So if you can get him in, and it kind of suits you, especially if you don't have English, so that means you'll get like, say you've got like a Gorn or Wits there or something, you'll get a Ruckman with all, uh, in all three rounds. So no brainer to get Briggs in if you don't have English, I think. Uh, I'm not getting him just because it doesn't really work out for me, and I don't need his money. So I'd love to have him though, if I could. I think he'll score well. Um... Not much to say on uh, old Richmond, new coach. Who, I think, um, what's his name? Someone, Marlon Pickett, when, as an inside mid. So that's interesting. Samson Ryan, if you have him, I think, yeah, with Nank in the team, he's, you know, subbed off. I think you got to get rid of him. So, role's not good enough. Now, last game, Essendon versus North. So an interesting one here. Oh, Davey, extended bench. So maybe he's playing, I don't know, but... Um, Rep Montgomery extended, so probably doesn't play. Uh, not much to tell on Essendon side of things. I think they're expecting Parrish to come back soon. She was back, it seems. Uh, so that's good, I guess, for Essendon. And then North, North Melbourne. So the big one here is Big Taron Thomas. Um, Mitch Cleary tweeted that Taron Thomas will be playing now. I don't know where he's played in the VFL. I can't tell where. Um, I know that he was tried at pre in preseason at half back. I suspect he'll be a straight swap for Aaron Hall. Just trying to think who plays. I think a Wardlaw named on Bolsa. I think yeah, Wardlaw is a great option if you can grab him. I'll be grabbing for just a bit more of a safety net with the two big scores and the discounted price at one twenty three. But I do like Wardlaw, so I would, yeah, recommend him if you're. Want to go him as well, but I think Ford over Wardlaw just for safety of money. And uh, I don't know what Ford's durability is, but I know Wardlaw's hasn't been great, but it's a rookie, so you don't need him for that long. So, who plays here? So, 
I think Core does. I think How does. I think he's played all right. Thomas, they said, is playing. And then I can't see him dropping Will Phillips. So I think that will be those guys. I am not. I don't think Phoenix will play. I think Hall will be dropped. So how does that affect Sheezel and, and whatnot? Um, so I think it seems like Sheezel will continue this mid-half forward role. Can he be keeper in this role? It's It's a tough ask, but... I don't know. They like him around the ball, so I think he can be like a maybe a low nineties guy in this role. Fingers crossed. If the CBAs are like forty, fifty percent, but I think uh, LDU's back soon, so um, I'll be keeping for the time being. Um, yeah, having Day and Cheese on the final team not ideal, but all gone well. Maybe you can get rid of one, but yeah, they're cutting it very fine. So um, that's it from me. Uh, good luck for this week I uh, think yeah get through this week next week being chilling on the easy buy round and then the last two buys will present some hurdles especially if we get like suspensions and injuries and maybe you should just trade in defenders for the time being just so your midfielders don't get suspended in the buy round so anyway that's all from me thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next